Dear friends and family, we are gathered here in the presence of God to join Eric Goodwin and Nicole Pitkin in holy prayers. <laughs> I'm just so excited. Sorry. Mary is one of the oldest and most sacred institutions of God. It was established in the Garden of Eden when God said, It is not good for man to be alone. Jesus declared that a man shall forsake his mother and father and cleave to his wife. The Apostle Paul linked marriage to the union which exists between Christ and the church and in the Holy Bible. Marriage is a covenant that is honorable before all, before all men. Who gives this woman marriage? We do. <laughs> you guys can take a seat. Let's Hello everyone, my name is uh, James Clark, I'm one of the pastors of Resonate Church, and it is such a blessing to be here today, <laughs> standing between two of my friends. I met Eric about six years ago at Washington State University through Resonate Church, and, and I met Nicole a couple of years after that when she started taking opportunities to lead within, within our church. And since then, Eric and I have been in a couple of small groups together. He's been a consistently generous friend towards myself and my family. Also, once I figured out how to track his sarcasm, he's been a constant source of laughter in my life. Um, Nicole, about a year ago, Nicole picked up her life in Pullman and moved alongside my wife and I to start a church in Bellingham, Washington. And just ask Nicole, there were hardships, but she took them in stride. She was a champion. So at the end, it's a huge honor to be here right now to celebrate alongside Nicole and Eric and all of you, their family and closest friends. It is such an honor. And we as a community of friends and family get to join with Nicole and Eric as they commit to one another in the covenant of marriage. You guys ready? All right. So the first time that Eric ever noticed Nicole 
was during a training event for small group leaders at Resonate in 2017. In Eric's own words, she really stood out to me and I wanted to talk to her badly. Sadly, <laughs> Eric did not actually talk to Nicole that time. Um, about a year later, it took about a year for Nicole and Eric to cross paths again, and this time Eric was actually a stage actor in Legally Blonde Musical. And Nicole was recruited to help with the choreography for this play. And in Nicole's own words this time, Eric was the really cool star child that everyone knew. <laughs> she wanted to get to know Eric better and tried to talk to him really hard about music, about himself, but for some reason, Eric just would not hold a conversation with her, for some reason. Now today we can assume that's because Eric was maybe a little nervous, right? That was it. But for Nicole, this jerk wouldn't give her the time of day. <laughs> that was the problem. I'm starting to see a pattern here, by the way. So one year passed. In case you guys didn't know, Eric's a part of a band called Tons and Tons, if you've never heard that. Um, and they were playing a show in Bothell. Nicole was once again recruited to help out with managing this show. Eric finally was able to talk to her. You did it, man. <laughs> they exchanged phone numbers. Next came long text conversations. You got it. You guys know where this is going. After about a week, about, about a week of texting novels to one another, Eric asked Nicole on a date. Nicole made Eric wait almost five hours for a response, but eventually she said yes. <laughs> Eric made the trip over to Pullman, where they went out to dinner. They walked around the city. They went on a few more dates after that, because that one went well enough for there to be a second and a third date. And after a couple of months of this, they made it official. Two months into long distance dating, Eric asked Nicole if he could tell her that he loved her. Nicole, knowing that love is not just an expression of emotion, but a statement of incredible commitment, said, yes, you can tell me that. <laughs> oh, by the way, I love you too. <laughs> then that November of 2019, Eric took Nicole to watch the sunset, gave her a series of time capsules full of memories they had shared, and asked if she would marry him. As we can see, Nicole said yes. And praise God, here you two are today, about to get married. It is a glorious day. One thing that you're going to learn really quickly about Nicole, if you don't know her, if you know her already, you know this about her. If there's something that needs to get done, if you need help with something, she's the person you want with you. Nicole is hardworking, she is bold, and she's not afraid to say the hard things that need to be said. Thank God for that. At the same time, I've seen Nicole be vulnerable and quick to forgive. That's a rare quality for someone who can say the hard things but also be vulnerable and quick to forgive at the same time. Even in really challenging situations, I've seen her navigate those extraordinarily well. More importantly than all of this, Nicole is loved by Jesus. And at the core of who she is, she has a deep love for Jesus as well. Eric is talented and intelligent, but he would never tell you that. He would never tell you that. He's humble. I've seen him be patient, generous, and kind. One of Nicole's first memories of Eric is of him navigating some intense conflict with, with the set, patience and kindness, asking questions and seeking first to understand then to be understood. I've seen that from Eric as well. Most important, Eric is loved by Jesus, has a deep love for Jesus at the core of who he is. So I can spend the rest of this time talking about these two, about how amazing and beautiful Nicole is, how handsome and awesome Eric is, but the truth is that Nicole and Eric's lives are consumed with something so much bigger than just this moment or just themselves. Their lives are pointing to something in someone so much bigger than they are. So all of us walk into this place with different stories and different backgrounds, but all of us are here because we love Nicole and Eric, right? Yes. In a world where so many marriages end, divorce is not an option for these two. They're living with something so much bigger. Jesus has captured their heart and soul. This wedding points to the greater wedding to come, and this marriage is a shadow of the covenant that God makes with his people. Eric and Nicole have given their lives to the truth that God created all people to know him and to love him. But we have turned our back on God and chosen to do life on our own. We've separated ourselves from God because of our rebellion, and we have no hope of joining him on our own. But God, being rich in mercy, sent a hero to save us all. He came to earth himself as a man named Jesus. The king left his throne room, wrapped himself in human flesh, and walked on planet earth. We call him Jesus, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. He lived on earth for 33 years, completely perfect, teaching us what it means to be fully human, and then willingly laid his life down on a cross that we deserved 
in order to rescue us and redeem us. Three days after being placed into a tomb, he rose from the grave, proving that he has power over sin and death for all of eternity. All that call upon his name can experience the same life and joy that we have all witnessed inside of the culinary. That is available to all of us, and it's a beautiful truth. They love you guys and want you to know the story that has captured their heart and changed their lives. So Eric and Nicole, they're, they're not here today for any reason but Jesus. They're here today because of Jesus, for the glory of Jesus. Without Jesus, they know they have nothing, and with him, they realize they have everything. Jesus' view of marriage is so clear. In scripture, he quoted Genesis when he said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so then they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Jesus gave us two important truths about what marriage is in this scripture. First, Jesus tells us that two lives are going to become one. You two are going to literally become one. That is a miracle. What that means is this is a miraculous event. This is a divine event. And then what he says is what God joins together, let no man separate. This is profound. He's telling us that this marriage does not just belong to you. It belongs to God. The marriage belongs to God, and that is good news, because he is a really good steward of his things. The second truth, although you are now one, in God's marriage, you both play distinct roles. Ephesians 5.21, it says, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Nicole, as a wife, you're called to submit to your husband as to the Lord. The picture he's painting here is not one of oppression or control, but of a voluntary giving in, of a release, the ultimate release. This is going to require a lot of respect and trust, immense respect and trust. Eve was created to be Adam's easer, the word means helper. As you have done and will do, help in Eric. Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Eric, the role of the husband is simply this. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. Now we must realize what that means. The context he's saying that in is the context of the cross. The husband's role is not to give in, but actually to give up. Give up your own life if need be. Give up your life daily for your wife. We aren't talking about letting her get her way. But we have to remember that Christ gave up his life and pursued a bride, the church, all of us, who rejects him daily. Your role as the husband isn't just to love unconditionally, but it's to initiate love unconditionally. You go first, even when you don't want to. Christ pursued his bride, the church. Eric, you were called to pursue Nicole in everything. Now, both of you need to understand this. You're going to fail these roles a couple of times, at least once or twice. There will be days when you hurt each other. On those days, it is still the perfect grace of God shown through the person and work of Jesus Christ on the cross who died for his enemies that will lead us to rapidly forgive one another and reconcile. And trust me, every conflict and uh, reconciliation in marriage is another opportunity to grow closer to one another and closer to God. It's a good thing. It's amazing that Jesus transforms conflict and challenge into deeper relationships. The grace of God is going to sustain you. So, Nicole and Eric did not choose to make this commitment alone. The men and women that you see around these two are people that are going to continue to walk through life with them. They are not simply just friends. They are people who are going to fight for them, who are here to pray for them. These men and women, by standing here today, are committing to fight with them for their marriage in truth. Nicole and Eric have written their own vows. And they wish to privately speak these to each other as they step into the covenants of marriage. They will also be partaking in the sacrament of communion as their first act of marriage, reflecting on the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. 
So the men, as this is happening, the men and women surrounding them will be taking their first act of fighting for this marriage by praying for Nicole and Eric as we engage in this. Now, friends and family, you are committing to them as well. By being in this room as witnesses of this day, we ask that you agree to be advocates of their marriage through seeking the Lord too. If today you wouldn't consider yourself a follower of Jesus, we would encourage you through common grace to know that God extends to all humanity an open door to seek him even when you are unsure of who he is. So pray to the God that Nicole and Eric love to bless their marriage. Now, let's do some vows and communion.
Nicole and Eric have chosen to symbolize the covenant to one another by the wearing of rings. Best man, you got the ring? Yes. Now, Eric, take that ring and put it on Nicole's finger. Repeat after me. You keep holding hands. <laughs> I, Eric. I, Eric. Take you, Nicole. Take you, Nicole. To be my wedded not wife. To be my wedded wife. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to love you unconditionally. To honor and cherish you. To honor and cherish you. To care for you the best I can. To care for you the best I can. And to walk faithfully before the Lord. And to walk faithfully before the Lord. So that I may lead our home in truth. So that I may lead our home in truth. From this day forward. From this day forward. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Maid of honor. You got the ring? That's it. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, go ahead and Nicole, go ahead and Eric's finger. Repeat after me. I, Nicole, take you, Eric, to be my wedded husband. I promise to love you unconditionally. To follow and support you. To care for you the best I can. To walk faithfully before the Lord. So that I may offer you respect in my love. From this day forward. As long as we both shall live. As a minister of the gospel and by the authority given me by the state of Washington, I now pronounce you man and wife. Those who God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Eric, you can kiss your bride. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Have a blessed day.